Well, welcome back. And as I said in uh, this episode, now what we're going to do is to start to bring this whole thing to life by adding in the uh, raw video that I shot with the camera and start to blend it back into the forms of the water in and around here again to give the sense of um, mo motion and movement beneath the uh, still image. So to begin what I need to do is to come up under window and come down to bring up the timeline. So when you first bring up uh, the timeline you will probably see a small disclosure box down here that uh, she says create video timeline. And all you need to do is to click on that and what it actually does is adds a couple of layers, a, uh, a movie layer, or in this particular case just a regular layer because this is a still image, and an audio track. So now what I need to do is just go click on this down arrow here and select new video group. What I want to do is I want to rename this and the way you do that, you can't do it down here. So you have to go up to the layers in the layers panel, double click on it like you would any other regular layer and I'm just going to rename that video because that's where the old video is going to go and that then gets reflected down here and for that matter I'm then just going to name this still so that's the still image so with the video track uh, now selected I again I'm going to click and go add media and then what I need to do is just go and hunt for the raw footage and I've stacked it and I have a folder here from camera so this is the raw uh, video footage that I that did and this is the movie I need to bring in so I'm just going to double click on that and bang it brings it in now it brings it in a into a container and that's actually just linking back to that raw file and with that in mind um, just watch the wise at this juncture it's uh, if you then go and move that raw um, video footage to say like another folder you are going to break the link and next time you maybe come to this to work further on it you're going to see a big red question mark because as I say it can't find that source move because it's moved so in terms of best practice always kind of keep the uh, PSD file the Photoshop file and the raw movie uh, sort of like together and sort of like not start swapping things and putting you know either PSD into a different folder uh, or and or the uh, the video footage into another folder because that link will be broken right okay so here we are here is our raw footage overlaid now on top of our still so let me just toggle that on and off and we'll take a look and as you can see there is going to be quite a, a discrepancy in terms of the alignment of the video footage with the still image underneath but we'll fix that in just a few but first of all let me just extend the still image so it's the same length as the actual movie and I'm just going to hit the space bar and we can just see what we've got right so there it is playing back in its full 60 frames per second glory now the first thing I want to do is I actually want to change the rate of that motion and so in order to do that what I need to do is to control click on the movie and it will bring up a dialog box with a couple of options one that's going to affect the actual video and the audio now for the with the video um, icon selected I'm just going to change the duration bang on to 60 seconds for a minute and I'm going to click again and I'm going to reduce the speed down to 30%. So we just put that back to the beginning and let's play this. Well, it's all looking pretty good and you can see that this is probably one of the benefits and advantages of shooting at the highest frame rate you possibly can because then when you come to change the rate the the motion is going to be that much smoother uh, than in say you uh, shot at 30 frames per second or in 23 frames per second that's just going to look a, a, a slightly more choppy than uh, if you're shooting at a higher frame rate but as you can see once we actually do alter the uh, the rate of this video it cancels out the audio so that's why it was important at the beginning that if you do want to include the audio of this hissing and bubbling that you do need to extract it first so you can then bring it back in on its own individual audio layer so it can play in conjunction with obviously the uh, the movie. Now I'm just going to make sure that the still image is the same length as the uh, video. Now comes the challenge of actually as I say aligning the water from the video with the water in the still image now in many respects it 
doesn't really have to be that 100% accurate because in essence I'm not remotely concerned about any of this other stuff in terms of the land part because that's all going to be hidden by the still image but what is going to be important is to try and get as good a fit with the uh, overlaying or, or the water from the video underlying underlying the still image because what, what I'm going to do in a minute is change the stacking order of these two so that the still image is on top and the video is underneath. What I'm now going to do is to come up to the video uh, folder and I'm just going to reduce its opacity so I can begin to see where we're at in terms of fit and yeah the, this definitely needs to be shifted around a bit and a lot of this can be done you know just by hand and just by eye there's no kind of real particular science to it so what I'm going to do is going to press V on my uh, keyboard to bring up my move tool and I'm literally I'm going to hold down the shift key so I can constrain it vertically up and down and see yeah okay so it looks like it's riding high so I'm just going to start to drag that down and looking at the top of the falls just so they start to line up with the top of the still image there and I can see maybe what I need to do I might need to do some pulling and squishing so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to select the actual video layer and press command T to invoke the transform and I'm literally just going to start pulling and pushing and when you do that it starts to jump around a bit but no need to panic I um, just want to kind of pull these to the right. I'm kind of looking to align this, this stream here and obviously now this has shifted so I'm just going to need to I'm just going to need to move that up because it's dropped down quite a long way. As soon as, I, as soon as you start kind of trying to distort it it does immediately jump around a bit but that's looking pretty good. Just going to pull that in a bit, yeah I'm just going to marry up, yeah right in there, get that overlaid here, this is looking pretty good, I'm just going to see if I need to raise or lower it a little bit, just looking at this bottom edge down here, and just around about there, let's see on this left edge, If yeah just need to maybe pull that out very fractionally, but that's going to be good enough and at this juncture what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit uh, enter to accept that but now what I need to do is I just want to set a couple of guides at the top and most importantly the bottom obviously I need to take the opacity of that back up to 100 but what I'm now going to do is just going to close the folder and I'm now going to drag it down to swap the stacking order so now we're back with our still image. So what this guide is going to do is, is just going to give me an indication of where the movie ends and the still image carries on over. The top is not really that essential because I'm not going to be masking in around the top. I'm just going to be masking in over the surface of the water. So with that said, I'm now going to do that. So what I need to do is just select the still layer and just add a regular good old white mask. Now. If you're new to the concept of masking, all you need to remember is the mantra that black conceals, white reveals. Now with that in mind, if I was to now paint black onto this layer mask, it's going to conceal the still image that it's attached to. And by concealing the still image that it's attached to, it's then going to allow the video on the layer beneath it to start showing through. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm now going to just tap the B key uh, to bring up my brush. I want to make sure that my foreground is set to black so I can start painting with black. And the key here is uh, to, to, to build up gradually and, and subtlety is pretty important with this. So I'm just going to hit the uh, number 2 key on my keyboard to make the opacity of this brush 20%. All I'm going to do, make sure I'm targeting this mask <laughs> and not the actual image itself because God knows how many times I've done that and I'm literally just going to start very gently ghosting over the top of that still image in and around here being careful not to go any further than this boundary line because if I do you see what's happening is it's now concealing this image but this is where this line is where the video ends and all I'm going to get is the transparent checkerboard of where the, um, the the video is sitting on that layer so again now if I need to bring that back I just do the alternative I just press X to fill the brush with white and now by painting over this I'm going to bring it up to 100% by tapping the zero key 
I can then just bring that back. So I'm just going to switch back to black by press, tapping the X key and I'm now going to just press the two, number 2 key just again to make this 20% uh, opacity and I'm just going to continue with just gently blending back in some of this moving water. Now you're going to start to see a little bit of coloration happening as it starts showing through and that's obviously because the video had a very different sort of coloration and white balance compared to how I process this image. I'm going to make the brush very small just to start revealing some moving water at the top here. Working it very gently and again just very subtly just down here around here a bit more okay let's see what we got that's going to take it back to hit the take the playhead back to the beginning and action and now you can see by let me just option click on the mask actually I probably need to stop that first let me just option click on the mask you can see just with these very very light touches of black that is actually just very f gradually and subtly concealing this still image that it's attached to it's now allowing this video layer underneath to start showing through and yeah I can see that I've just got a little bit of checkerboard um, appearing under here so I was a little bit sloppy down there so let me just stop the video hit my B key press D to set to the default so it's black and white and I'm going to press X just to fill the brush with white I'm just going to bring the opacity of the brush up to 100% so it's solid white I'm going to make sure that I'm targeting the layer not the actual uh, still image because that's what's going to happen and we don't want that, come on Z so you've got to make sure you're targeting the mask and just start to just paint over that to bring back the still image so it hides the join where the video ends and there you have it that's really all there is to it now if you if you feel that you, you, it's gone a bit hot and you've actually revealed too much and you know it's going to be quite hard to keep going back swapping in from black and white this that and the other as you know you can actually reduce the opacity of the actual layer itself which unfortunately in this situation isn't going to help us very much because obviously it's just going to knock back the, the still image globally so all I need to do is just click and uh, on the uh, layer mask to make it active. And I come down to the uh, mask properties. If I just start pulling on the density, it's actually reducing the opacity of that mask. And let me just show you by option clicking on it. So here's our masking. If I just start to reduce the opacity, the density of that mask, it basically starts knocking it back and if we take it all the way back to zero then basically we're at a back right back to the still image so with this now selected selecting the layer again if I just now pull the density it's going to increase the black and it's going to allow more of that to come through as you can see there so again there's there's ways that you can adjust the presence of the water either by as I say white reveals black conceals by painting with the uh, with the brush or you can globally adjust its presence just by dragging on and altering the density i.e. the opacity of the actual layer mask itself so in essence that's all there really is to it it's just a question as I say of bringing in the raw video doing a little bit of futzing to kind of bring it into alignment with the uh, still image uh, above it and then just starting to blend in that video just through painting on the mask as I say to conceal um, parts of the still image thus allowing that water to start flowing in and you know you can start looking at details I mean it's kind of nice down here where I'm getting the the reflection off the surface of the water with the dappling of the sunlight just in terms of like something else you might want to take a look at let's say for example I kind of want to gonna bring a little bit more focus into the the center of the falls here I may want to kind of add a vignette so in order to do that very simple I'll just hit the uh, get the circle marquee tool up put the crosshairs on the corner click and drag out edge to edge to the bottom right hand corner let go 
Now what I want to do with this selection, I want to make an inversion of this because any adjustments I would, any adjustment layers that I add is going to affect the inside and I need it to affect the outside. So I'm just going to press Command Shift I to create that inversion. And as I say, now that's inverted it. And I'm just going to come down and add a levels adjustment layer. Clicking on the um, properties of the levels adjustment layer, I'm just going to say like start bringing down the midtones just to darken everything down. And of course, obviously, the only problem here now is we've got a hard edge and we're on a nice soft edge. So again, I'm just going to swap over to the uh, mask properties, click on the mask to select it, and then I'm just going to bring up the feathering just to soften that edge. And again, being more focused. And if it's getting a bit too dark in there, again, all I just need to do is to reduce the opacity of the layer. Now, as I say, if when you start blending back in the water, you start to get a kind of a, a slightly weird color cast appearing due to the fact that obviously the white balance of the, the video or the coloration of the video is going to be probably quite significantly different to possibly the image you shot with the camera. Well, a simple fix for that is to actually go to the video uh, layer and toggle down on the uh, video group, select the video itself and then simply add a black and white adjustment layer and as you can see just by adding it and neutralizing it to the black and white it removes any kind of like weird possible yellow tinging or whatever or any kind of like color artifacts coming in as I say due to the colorization of the video and in the next video I'm just going to quickly show you how we can bring back in that audio file that we exported earlier on at the beginning to bring back the, any sound uh, that you may want to have as part of this movie. Okay, catch you in the next one.